Have you ever wondered how all the chemical elements are made? Then join me as we are lifting all the Stardust secrets to understand the cosmic origin of the chemical elements. We just talked about fusion processes and how elements are made in stars, uh, mostly for energy generation purposes. Now let's look at how that actually manifests in the star as a whole, because as astronomers, we can observe stars, but we can't really look inside of stars. We can only see the surface. There are a number of ways we can get clues from the surface of a star as to what's going on in the core. And uh, so overall, this is a really nice um, example of how nuclear physics um, and astrophysics, nuclear and astrophysics, uh, come together because the nuclear physics governs what's happening inside the core uh, and then the astrophysics provides what, what we can actually observe and both kind of need to come together and, and work out. Um, and so over the last several decades a lot of progress has been made to put, put these two together and to understand what is uh, now called stellar evolution. That is actually governed by the nuclear physics processes, specifically fusion in the core. And I wanted to share this with you because it's very insightful. So I'm going to draw what we call a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Um, it basically shows how a star evolves um, during its lifetime. We can use the sun as an example. And what we're going to have is we're going to have hot stars here and cool stars here. Um, and then we have more luminous stars up here and less luminous stars down here. And uh, there is a certain track that looks like this, half of a Christmas tree. Um, and the sun actually sits right now about here. One can put any star in this diagram and you will see in a, in a moment how, uh, how we can then learn about the evolutionary phase of the star and hence what's going on inside of its core. its core. So the sun is sitting here and we know on this branch here, uh, which we call the main sequence, that um, stars burn hydrogen to helium. How does this look? Um, if we draw a star here, in the core, um, hydrogen is burned into helium, just like what we had in the previous section. Um, the star, uh, if, when it moves on, oh, and I should say, it will. Every star will kind of start somewhere along the main sequence here, and it will stay there for about 90% of its lifetime. Which means coming back to the old stars for a second, 90% of 15 billion years is about the age of the universe, which means the stars that um, uh, started here when they were born in the early universe, they are just at the end of this hydrogen to helium process, um, which really means they haven't done anything else but burning hydrogen to helium, which really is the key to why these stars uh, don't show their age. <laughs> they are just like what they've always done and we can observe them today and infer things about the early universe from them today uh, because they haven't changed. That's the key here. So, but if we look at a star that, uh, that, that has a shorter lifetime and, and wants to evolve, um, it will move up here and it will move up here when the core, um, let's see this was hydrogen here and it has been converted to helium when we indeed have just um, helium in the core and there's no hydrogen left in the core. Then the star will get a little bit rumbly and so it's going to start moving along here. And there are all sorts of things going on in the core because the, the thermostat is, is out. There's no energy being produced right now. Um, and so it, what happens is the star actually inflates to counteract that and it will move up here and become very luminous. And up here we have the red giants they're called red giants because they're much bigger and more luminous, uh, but they're also cooler because they are, they, are, they are bigger and so they turn red. And so they have just a helium core. And what's happening is in an outer shell here, there is still burn hydrogen to helium burning 
going on in the shell. And that provides a little bit of um, substitute energy, a little interim inter energy to the star as it moves up here. And then up here, we have uh, something called the helium flash, which means the helium here in the, in the core is now being converted to carbon. Um, how can I draw this? We will make this go away. So we eventually get helium gets helium gets converted to carbon. So eventually, we're going to get to a carbon core, and then we have helium burning um, he further out, and hydrogen burning yet further out. So when the carbon uh, when the helium burning starts here, by the time it reaches here, it has this carbon core. So here it reaches a helium core this region uh, and then helium starts to to burn and then by the time it gets on here we have the carbon core and then it moves up here and this last part here it really depends on the mass of the star the sun is actually not gonna do much it's gonna just stick it out with uh, a carbon oxygen core um, here and then turn into white dwarf and just cool down so the sun is actually a pretty boring star that has a pretty boring fate uh, if we make the sun um, much more massive let's say 10 times more massive, it would move up here in this carbon burning phase and a variety of later burning stages that lead to iron. And then it would have an iron core up here. And you already know what's going to happen if a star has an iron core. It has lost its energy source and it will explode as a supernova. And so before it explodes, what's it going to look like? We have a whole bunch of these so-called shells. Sometimes they're referred to as onion shells. And in the center we have iron, and then there's um, silicon and all the other elements folding out here. Um, oxygen, carbon, helium. Let's draw another one. And hydrogen. There are a few more other elements being produced in, in minority processes. So some of these shells are not pure in, 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 in these elements, but that's the kind of the basic idea that um, you go, um, well, this is oxygen and silicon, and this is sulfur and others, uh, that, that you have a, a star that looks like that. So um, what you see here is that whatever is happening in the core has a direct impact of where the object sits on this diagram here and so by measuring the luminosity of a star as well as its temperature we can place it on this diagram and then learn in which evolutionary state the star is currently in which tells us what is going on in its core.